Take a right turn up here. So you say you've been playing with this guy for a while, Elvis? Yeah, Mason. Tony has been doing an ongoing campaign with the same characters for like a year now, and I'm really invested. With the same characters? I thought you said your game ran out of players. Yeah, but I'm still in it, Paul. And Tony sort of has a DMPC that he plays as. Is he a big bad? It's sort of poor form to have a DMPC unless the GM is leading the party. Larry, shouldn't that be a GMPC? You know, game master player character instead of dungeon master? I'm not going to get sucked into a pedantic argument with you about acronyms, Paul. We all know what I mean. Tony's characters aren't exactly supposed to be bad guys, but I got him to start playing with a system besides D&D, and he's been way into it. And you know, I just want to foster experimenting with stuff outside the mainstream. And, oh, this is, here's this house. But why'd we have to pick up the pizza? He's the host. Well, Tony's got different rules. It's his house and he GM, so we bring the food. I mean, I can see that. Most people don't want to run the game. It's too much work. Hey, Elvis! Elvis' is friends! I'm Tony! Good to meet you, Tony. I'm Mason. We brought you a pizza. Oh, pepperoni, my favorite. That's great. Come on in. I'm Paul. I really like the setting outline. You know, it reminded me a bit of a game I played with Elvis a while back. A lady choked on a peanut, and they escaped on a flying boat. Oh yeah, turn of the century diesel pug thing. Where magic powers the city lights. I think Elvis told me about that. I did. That's when Magic Tony started trying to mass produce magical lights to sell to people. Oh, that's right, because Magic Tony was a homebrew artificer before we changed systems. That That's right. Yeah, you were homebrewing everything. I was. This is so much better. Anyway, everybody, come sit down. My name is Lowry. I think I might already hate your game. Well, that's okay. You'll like it soon. I put a lot of thought into it. Help yourself to some pizza. Thank you, Tony. I will. I paid for this pizza. Lowry sometimes takes a little warming up, too. It, it's okay. I'm going to kill your DMPC. Okay, well, let's just go around the table real quick and establish everybody. I already know Elvis. He's playing a retired assassin and has already been working under one of the richest men in Sicilis. It's like a Mediterranean country. They grow grapes. All the other bodyguards died after you messed up a court case with an angry undead spirit. So your boss, Flor de Blasio, hired three new bodyguards on short notice. Our lawyer sucked. He wasn't really your lawyer. He was giving us legal counsel. Legally, he is. The first new guard is Mason. Who's your character? I'm Mason Five Swords. I'm the sixth son of a famous sword master who owned five magical swords. Each of my brothers was going to get one sword, leaving me with only a regular non-magic sword. So one night, I stole all six swords and fled my home. After that, I learned to fight while holding all six swords at once, so I could feel morally justified for my behavior. But I refused to acknowledge the sixth non-magical sword, Mason Five Swords. Oh, okay, cool. I dig it. How about Paul? But I've also got family issues. My parents are bitter divorcees who subjected me to a ridiculous custody battle. Both were soldiers who retired to be talented smiths and magical engineers who tried to curry my favor with powerful artifacts. My mother made me a shield that heals wounds and reflects force directed against it. My father made me a warhammer that pierces all armors and erodes confidence by striking bitterly at the heart. Mom was nicer, but Dad had more money, and I'm sure if I save the world or something, I'll live up to their expectations and they'll get back together. <sighs> That's cool. What's your dad's name? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Joe or something. I didn't think it would come up. Okay, I'll have to remember that. And how about Lowry? They call me the Sage Charlatan. At least if they know me. I've got tons of mechanical tricks up my sleeves and have traveled the world pretending to be able to levitate, see the future, and cast earthly magics that won't be evident for many seasons. I got this job because I lied on my resume, and I know there's not much chance of having to fight anyone in the course of ordinary guard duty. Okay, cool. Well, you guys have all signed on with a temporary contract to guard Fleur de Blasio as he makes a trip to a place called Pinball City. It's an uneventful trip on de Blasio's flying yacht, until, after a week of travel, you see a glorious silver city decorated in gold trimmings. It's suspended over the ocean on a small ball bearing about the size of a pinball, and the pinball is heavily decorated with complex magical sigils. It's customary to fly beneath it before docking, just to admire the craftsmanship and view the aura of magic emanating from it. After your tourist flyby, you land at a dock and everyone disembarks. So boss, Mr. de Blasio, you need us to carry luggage or anything? Oh no, thank you. I travel light. And besides, this is as much a vacation for my guards as it is for me. You know, Elvis, I was talking to my neighbor David. David again? It's not every day that your farmhands come back from the dead with a court subpoena, Mr. de Blasio. I did pretty well, considering the challenges. I think you're right, Elvis. 
The real problem was that, unlike David's guards who had equipment to fight the undead as a standard precaution, you were not prepared. That's why I'm going to shop for products that can ward off the undead. Oh. Oh, so you're going to buy new weapons for us? Because that'd be great. All I got left is this knife and my invisibility ring. Yes, that thing's obnoxious. But, but you know what I hear? There's a coliseum in the city where they show off and even let you test the products. I don't know what we'll find, but let's have a look. Sign up for a demo, maybe. Yeah. Okay, sure. Hey, Elvis, what exactly happened with this lawsuit you keep mentioning? Oh, it was a whole thing, Mason. The lawyer was a vampire who could hypnotize the jury. Two of my friends died. I don't think that was mentioned in the job application, Elvis. Well, I mean, it probably wouldn't happen again, Lowry. It's their fault for not asking. You should always do your due diligence. Any employer will ask for your references, but I bet you never thought to ask me for mine. But it sounds like all your employees are dead. Yes, and that is a massive red flag. Anyway, let's hop down to the Coliseum. I want to get there before sunset. You guys walk along the gold-laced streets of Pinball City behind de Blasio, and the entire trip is an absolute marvel. They have a complex aqueduct system with clean water running up and down hill, magic-lit streetlights on every corner, the sewer gutters are made of marble. There's also a lot of greenery providing screens for noise pollution, including a few magical Culhart trees. Wait, there's gold circuitry fighting the flow of gravity across the city, and the sewer culverts are made of marble? Yeah, it's the world's wealthiest city. The Colhart trees are the more impressive note. They only grow on the island of Colhart normally. Okay, but it's marble. That's a soft stone. If you use it for water sewage, it's going to erode constantly. And what kind of taxes do they pay to have gold circuitry and all the infrastructure? It's a floating city, so they're obviously not importing the gold. They just replaced the marble. Uh, the Colhart trees are normally impossible to grow anywhere but Colhart. The Colhart trees are magical fictional trees, right? You could say the gutters are made of Colhart wood, and that'd be okay. Marble and water don't get along. That's They're real things. This is just non-functional opulence. I think you're underestimating the significance of the Colhart trees. If they can make Colhart grow on this island, they can turn marble into sewer gutters. See, Paul, the whole economy of Colhart would normally be supported... Colhart's a place, by the way. It would normally be supported by the export of Colhart wood. Once it's cut and dried in a kiln, it becomes the strongest steel, but it's a lot easier to work with. Plus, the trees are normally huge, like 20 stories tall, so you get a lot of materials from cutting down just a single tree. Before Pinball City, Colhart was the center of magical industry, and there's all these competing factions because Colhart was wiping out its own environment for the sake of production quotas, and there's tons of magical spirits that live in the woods who are angry about it. The thing is, you can also bind spirits into magical items, so there's a lot of incentive to mess with natural powers to get stronger equipment, at the expense that horrible demons tend to move in when there's no natural spirits to chase them away. Yeah, but Pinball City artificially summons both spirits and demons and deals in ethical contracting with them. So, spirit-infused equipment from Pinball City is a lot more cooperative with you than anything you get from Culhart. Yeah. So you see, Paul, marble being used for water drainage actually is less egregious than the fact that they're just growing their own sustainable Culhart trees. Because we have no reason to go to Culhart now. Oh. Although if you were real heroes, you'd go to Culhart just to stop their predatory industry leaders. So, Colhart and this place are the only ones who make this magical wood. Yes, but Pinball City has much better precision cutting tools. So if we destroyed Colhart's industry, we'd plunge Colhart into poverty, and then the only one making Colhart would be this place. No. Actually, I guess, maybe. Well, Colhart probably has import taxes or something. Actually, we cannot go back to Colhart. Wait, you can't? Why? Because I shot that foreman, remember? Oh, yeah. Yeah, because the spirits asked me to, and then they didn't give me anything, and they didn't even like me. Yeah, because you escalated the war between them and the people of Colhart. The spirits asked me to! The queen of the spirits asked me to! Well, she didn't promise you anything. She said she didn't remember promising me anything. Well, could we at least hide out with the spirits? No, because I shot the spirit queen! Wait, did you? I need to make a note of that. Hang on. Oh, wait, I did make a note of that. It, it says she gave you the Staff of Moonlight. I stole the Staff of Moonlight after I shot her, Tony, because she promised it to me. And then it broke, like three sessions later, when I used it as a crowbar, even though it was made of coal heart. Man, Elvis, your character has a much more complicated work history than I realized. Indeed. I would have liked to know all this before hiring you. Well, you didn't ask, de Blasio. You should have checked my references. Anyway, uh, 
I don't remember where I was with the description of the city. Everyone in Kohite sucks and is my enemy. I'm never going back there. Well, anyway, uh, you guys carry on until you arrive downtown and find yourselves looking at a large coliseum building with massive magical lanterns on top. At the front entrance, there's a huge buff-looking dude wearing a, a blacksmith's apron. When you approach, he says, Greetings, travelers. I am Smithsonian Fist, the pinball city blacksmith. And you are now standing in front of the Demo Dome, the premier location to test out all of our exciting products. He pulls out a platter with a bunch of assorted meats on it. Could I interest you in a free sample of Pinball City's famous exploding meat? Let your enemies kill themselves. Just pull out the toothpick and the meat explodes, taking your unfortunate victim's head with it. But that's not all. In an emergency, they also double as safe rations, just so long as you eat the toothpick. He inserts a whole cube of meat, toothpick and all, into his mouth and crunches it up. There's no explosion. Well, heck. I know there's a scam here, but I can't tell how it works. de Blasio also eats a meat sample, with the toothpick still in it. It's delicious, but I have an appointment for today under de Blasio. I believe it should be for a premium service. He looks at you. Oh. Are these your guys? They are some guys, yes. That's right. We're guys. And we need guy weapons, like beef jerky, or some kind of land vehicle with giant tires. And it has to be able to kill a vampiric lawyer. A barbecue stick to drive through his heart. Well, let's get you guys in the arena so you well, can test out well, our products. Well, hang on. Why an arena? Well, well, these are combat products, so to test them out... They have to be using No, combat. I don't think we'll be buying anything then. What? <laughs> Why not? I can handle an arena. Are you saying I can't? Who are you, my dad? Look, I'm not your dad. But whatever's in that arena, it's gonna be worse than you think it is. You're not my boss, Elvis. You're not my mom or dad. I shove Elvis aside and march right in that arena. You know, I already have five swords. I don't really need more. Mine also have sentimental value, but I do at least want to see what they're offering. No, there's got to be, like, jewelry or hats or something, right? Yeah, okay, maybe. But we're going to have to fight something. I'm Mason Five Swords. That's what I do. Not for long. It's not going to be for long. You know what? Paul's right. You're not my dad either. Well, Elvis, I'll quit before we start. I don't mind. Well, we really should. I really want to. But I guess we also ought to go in there and help the other guys, you know? I mean, we don't really know them. You don't have to care for them. You're not their dad. Well, maybe we'll just play it safe, though, you know? They're gonna need the help. I go in. Mr. Fist, I surrender. You, you haven't even entered the arena yet. <sighs> okay, fine. I go in the arena. You guys step into a large coliseum. The gates close behind you. The crowds roar. Uh, we didn't get any weapons. A man in a golden suit flies down in a pair of rocket boots, carrying a large megaphone. Oh my god! Welcome, one and all, to another exciting product demonstration! Tony! You get down here! Oh, hey, Elvis! Where's everybody else? They're all dead, Tony! Uh, That's a shame. I thought they were all tougher than that. Elvis, who's this? This is Magical Tony. He's an alchemist engineer mage. And if he would recall, our old friend Tychus the Wolf died trying to operate a steam engine that Tony built. The instruction manual clearly stated that you shouldn't operate the engine without proper training. We kept an angry spirit in the instruction manual, and it kept telling us to put strawberry jelly on everything. What are you doing here, Tony? If you built the weapons in this arena, we're not touching them. Are you sure? I was gonna offer. My weapons have the best sales, you know. I wanna live, Tony. All right, no magic weapons for you. Magic Tony flies up over the crowd and announces... So today I had several exciting new prototypes to show off, but that's not really why we're here. Our client, Mr. de Blasio, needs proving that we have the best bodyguards in the business. So, without further ado, I once again introduce to you, Tiny Dancer! The other gate slides up. A man who's about seven feet tall, wearing nothing but a loincloth, a glowing helmet, and carrying two shields emerges. He has the physique of a trim grizzly bear. I can neither dance, nor am I tiny. My nickname is Ironic. The crowd cheers. Wait a minute. Another bodyguard? De Blasio, we have a contract. You can't just do this. De Blasio shouts from the crowd. Good luck affording a lawyer. Tiny Dancer announces. I will defend de Blasio. I also have a law degree. 
I am trained in all forms of defense. Are we being replaced? Yeah, we just got hired. Well, Elvis vouched for you, and he hasn't exactly been performing well. David told me one of these pinball guards could mop the floor with my current bodyguard team for half the price. But this guy, Tiny Dancer, is a lawyer. I'm not working with a firm. Lawyers don't earn very good money early in their careers unless they make the right connections and get hired by a major company. Is that why you can't afford a shirt? My magic helmet and shields were very expensive, but with my physique, you don't need a shirt. Well, you need one to go shopping. They won't let you in a store without a shirt. Yeah, and de Blasio's rich. He probably does sit-down dining. And you gotta have at least real pants for that. Oh no! Mr. Magic Tony, I may have to withdraw from this battle and spend more time preparing. I've neglected a key aspect of my job requirements. De Blasio shouts, Oh, it's fine. I'll buy him a shirt if I have to. Tiny Dancer perks up. Really? I, I could never have dreamed of such charity. De Blasio is one of the most benevolent of contracted employers. I will fight now as though never before just to impress him. Tiny Dancer flexes his muscles and the wind kicks up around him. Electricity crackles in his aura. He's filled with the power of wanting to impress your boss. Oh, dang. I did not know you could power up from that. He points at Lowry. No, no, I surrender. He leaps forward and grabs you by the legs, then swings you overhead, slamming you down into the ground on his opposite side. You take 10 body and 30 stun. Well, I am unconscious. It's Elvis's turn. Activate my invisibility ring. You twist the ring and vanish from sight. But the ring is now emitting a sound like a power transformer. I throw my knife at Tiny Dancer. You miss. The knife flies by Tiny Dancer and hits a turtle man in the crowd. It lands in his head. A turtle man? But they're an endangered species. He looks okay. He has a knife in his head. How do you mean he looks okay? Why did you throw it? Because I'm invisible, and he wouldn't know where I am if I stay my distance. The turtle man scratches around the knife. Paul, you're up. Bash this guy with the warhammer. You swing the hammer, but Tiny Dancer intercepts it with one of his mighty tower shields. Oh, well, then I probably broke the shield. No, it's a big shield. How big? Because if an attack hits a shield, you do the damage to the shield. And my warhammer is imbued with my father's biting judgmental nature, so it only gets half armor. Oh, uh, well, it doesn't hit the shield. He just uses the shield to knock your warhammer away. Oh, okay. Mason. Gripping three swords awkwardly in each hand, cut this man down. He blocks you with the shield, but geez, that's a lot of damage. Yeah, it's six attacks, but it's a lot of smaller hits instead of one really big one, so it's not very good against armor or like a direct shield Yeah, block. still. Uh, you know what? Uh, you ram the swords against the shield and three of them break. They what? Yeah, uh, the, the shield is made of some of the most durable steel in the world. When your swords hit it, they shatter into pieces. Oh my god. Yeah, you're envious of this metalwork. I don't, I don't care about that. I just lost my identity. I stole those swords from my family. I'm Mason Five Swords. I learned to wield all five stolen swords and my own sword that I don't acknowledge. Now I'm Mason Two Swords. That's barely a title. Anyone can wield two swords. You still have three swords. I don't acknowledge that the last sword exists. Well, that sucks. But now it's Tiny Dancer's turn, and he says, Invisibility, huh? Normally I'd be disheartened by that, but empowered by my future boss's compassion, I know exactly what to do about it. He leaps high up into the air and grabs his ankles. Plunging prices! Saving shockwave! He lands knees first into the center of the arena, causing a massive shockwave of pure energy to ripple out in all directions. Everybody in the arena takes 12 body and 32 stun. Is anyone still awake? No. Dang it, guys, I said we shouldn't go in the arena. Paul, doesn't your shield redirect force? That's gotta be a direct attack. Man. Mason, I have been playing this campaign for months and my best weapon was a knife. Is that not a red flag? Man, I never know with you, Elvis. I thought you were doing a bit. My character's dead. Oh, really? I mean, unless there's a doctor with godlike medical powers within literally 30 seconds, I bleed to death. Then in that case, you're safe. Everybody wakes up in bed. When your eyes adjust, you realize you must be somewhere inside the Coliseum. You can hear the crowds cheering outside. Oh man, I feel like I got hit by a sexy muscular freight train. Buckle up everybody, the pain is only just beginning. A woman pokes her head in the room and says, Oh good, you're all awake. So. How will you be paying for your medical emergency? 